one of the questions that came, is the very first question uh, is how is the Global Ascension Center coming along? How are they funded? Who can attend? And what is the vision? Okay? Yeah, it's interesting because the question kind of points to maybe not understanding what the Global Ascension Center project was. To understand the concept, I would go to the Global Ascension Center dot org okay. and get the download on that. Um, the Global Ascension Center is about taking land out of private hands and converting it into sacred land. And also people, if you have like a yard or anything, you can actually do it in your own homes and convert that into sacred land. And it's like an education thing. We're going to do YouTube as well to educate people. And there's mm. one at least out there to educate how to reconnect with the sacredness of Gaia. Mm. Right. And the good news is, that, well, two good news is... Drum roll, please. Um, <laughs> we have bought the Global Ascension Center land. We have it. Three, Whoa. Three acres in Washington. And the healing branch of the Global Ascension Center is happening within the next few months. Yes. Right here, yes. Right? right here in Placerville, California, yeah. with Elaine Lipson and myself, Lazay Mystic. The, 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 the wing of the Global Ascension Center, the Healing Hub, will be right here, and the sacred space it in is Washington. Available. It is available, it's available now. Available now, yeah. Oh my God, what does it look like? It's wooded, it's like thick wood, and it's surrounded by the National Forest and the National Park up there, the Olympic um, National Park, I think it's called. Mm -hmm. And um, there's a biking trail that goes. To, um, front of it and there's this mm. beautiful what we call Mr. Rock. It's Ooh. a massive rock, <laughs> totally sentient. Oh. Uh, it's really quite marvelous. We, we do want to put some sort of structure there so an individual can arrive, you know. Right, right. That would be nice but yeah. for the time being we're just activating the land, talking to the trees and the elementals, see what it needs, mm. you know, because there is a lot of um, people came, they cut down trees to build things and ooh, they, ooh, gosh. they built, put trees to harvest so oh, reclaiming yeah. the land means also re-establishing the old kind of forest system mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. right right and reconnecting with the land there and the woods there even the forest uh, the, the commercial um, forestry ones which is you know the harvest mm -hmm. reconnecting with those and see well what do you want you know right and see what right happens. So, right Fascinating. We talked about this years ago, I know. having a hub and then spokes coming out from the exactly. hub. And this was going to be a healing, healing center, center and that there could be centers all over the world. Exactly, yeah. And then the center is wherever you, you are. are. <laughs> and here we are now. So wherever you are is where the Global Ascension Center is. Right. You know, or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> Your higher <laughs> self. Call it something else. <laughs> you can call whatever you want. Make up a new name if you like. Yeah. Uh, so that is really exciting. How was it funded? Uh, funded by people sending donations to the Global Ascension Center .org site. Okay. And they've been sending donations since 2011. Okay. So we raised about um, about fifty thousand dollars altogether. Uh, some of that had to go into forming a non-profit mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. that it would it will last beyond my life, right? And I want to be part of that because I want right. to donate my land and, and include it in the non in. yes in the non-profit. So right. it will go on exactly. And so it goes on. Yeah. It's continuity, and um, so some of those funds went to do that. That's quite a few thousand dollars to establish a company. Oh yes, a corporation, oh, yes. non-profit or non-profit. We're still going to have to pay for it. Yeah. And then the, there's like the you have to register all the taxes and stuff. So that costs some money. Um, uh, the land itself we paid twenty eight thousand for wow. three acres. Yeah. What a deal! Yeah, and My goodness. we're gonna have to pay some more. We're paying for a surveyor to do the line, the, mm -hmm. the boundaries, mm -hmm. and then we're gonna have to pay extra to get a house that's been built on the land onto the neighbor's property. So there's going to be an adjustment of the property line. Okay. So we'll end up probably with less than three acres, um, but that's fine. <laughs> it's, it's more than enough. Even one acre would have been fine. 
yeah. and it's what we had. Yeah. So yeah. You know, we still have a few thousand to you know put the fence up or whatever and, on and, the neighbors. And the nice thing is, is that it all fell into place. Yes, and, very quickly. And, yeah. When it's right. When it's right. And when it isn't right, we were talking about this before the show, um, or the video, that um, when it's not right, it just doesn't gel. And yeah. it's, and if you have to fight and, you know, could jump through hoops like a circus animal, then it's not the right thing to do mm -hmm. at that time. So, um, you know, that's, that's one of the things that we both, <laughs> we both have learned over the years. <laughs> learned. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Have we learned it? <laughs> oh, yes. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We've learned uh, it. One of us has learned it. <laughs> well, I think I have. Have I learned it? Uh, what were we I talking about? I don't know. I don't remember. <laughs> what did we do? Oh, yeah. Well, let's move on. Let's move on. <laughs> Change the subject. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Just, there are a couple of personal questions uh, towards you about dropping the body. What you know, do you think you'll be able to, to uh, hang out and help, um, help from off Earth? Uh, you know. Well, that's an interesting one, you know, because a lot of people project that type of energy, um, like keep Jesus, Savior, whatever, right. onto me, and that's not going to happen. <laughs> right. <laughs> so <it's> like, <laughs> right. Um, what I perceive is that before I incarnated, I wasn't a singular construct. I wasn't a like a, a single soul type thing, right? Mm -hmm. And I didn't have a trajectory, I just was formed as I incarnated into this body. Mm -hmm. um, in order to do certain things, and those things could include having an experience, but it's more to do with, uh, according to me, right, <laughs> to do with delivering a message of empowerment mm -hmm. and just being here. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's like once that's over, I dissolve back into the everything or nothing. Right? Mm -hmm. It's like right, it dissolves right. back into the, the all that is. The old, and yeah. isn't. Yeah. So when that happens, you no longer are a singular being. Right. So I, I cease to exist, but I don't cease to exist completely. As, as I cease to exist as an I, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I no longer will exist, but I will be everything. Right? It's like, I will be old and tigers and everything. Right? Like the movie Lucy. Oh, right, yeah, except she didn't die. Right. <laughs> well, right. her body disappeared, right? Her body kind of morphed into something. And, yeah, you know, something and then she was everything. Yeah, and then she was everything. And then this little thing popped out to communicate with the scientists that right. were left behind. Right. So, in a way, uh, I suppose, okay, this makes sense to me now. I've always thought that the Earth, Gaia Sophia, whatever you want to call her, is a feedback, many feedback loops. And that whatever we do, like if, if I'm in nature here, so if I go outside and I, uh, let's say I plant a, a flower or something, and I'm sick, and I take I go to the bathroom outside because I'm a man, and, and so everything is analyzed and pulled into the Earth, and, and it comes back in this feedback loop, so the Earth sends me back what I need. And that is the natural, organic way of doing things. And so maybe when we dissolve back into everythingness, then we are able to just be pulled into whatever is needed. In other words, if, if something is needed in a certain place in a faraway galaxy or beyond the material realms. That's then, a great possibility, yeah. Yeah, and then we then of that part of us we're in everything then, and so we are everything. We're all the people we knew, all the people we studied and loved and, and, and from this lifetime, and then the generations back and generations forward. So we're literally all that is, all that is. sitting here talking to yes. each other. And, uh, you know, that's taken a long time for me to, like, wrap my head around. Mm -hmm. But that is how to, that's how I see when I'm more present that, you know, whatever I do out there in nature, out there, is in here, and it's a feedback loop. Yeah. And so when it's, if you up, if you upset the recycling ability of the Gaia Sophia, then you're cutting yourself off from the ability, her ability to, although it's not really cutting yourself off, it just makes it a little more difficult to get yeah, the messages. A little, a little, little bit more yeah, just a little noisy, bit, yeah. you know, cities and things like that. Right. But you still get the message, you get into car accidents, and... <laughs> 
Oh, well, no, how do I get... Really, you get to a park and you see a beautiful butterfly. Yeah. That's a message. Yes. Don't get, go. into, <laughs> don't get into accidents. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. No, don't do that. No, no, don't no, have no, 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 no. We don't have Let's to get the messages through butterflies and yes. rainbows. Rainbows. Yes. Well, and hummingbirds. Oh, I love hummingbirds. So they yes. haven't been out today, but I've gotten the food out. And you gave me a feeder, too. That's, <laughs> yeah, it's really still incredible. out there. Um, well, you know, that kind of... Um, what we're talking about kind of it kind of transcends the need for questions because uh, you know we both kind of made a commitment uh, uh, you had a commitment to be here till 2017 and I kind of hung on your uh, ta tail your coattails <laughs> well on I kind of said please don't take me don't take me <laughs> you, got, you went okay <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and so you know um <laughs> And there were times when I thought, oh, and he was going to hate me, but i got to check I know, out. I know, but I knew those times, and I'd come back and say, I knew, no, no, I, knew, I, I knew she would come and get me if I tried to check out without her, you know, telling her. So, uh, but there have been times when I've really felt like, you know, yeah. I, can't, I can't go on another day. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, there's something to be said about that, that we are in trying times. It is, yeah. And, and that there, they are uh, difficult times, but as you've always pointed out, uh, everything we do is by choice, and so everything is our creation. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so if your life isn't beautiful, you know, you, who do you have to look at? Yourself. Right. You know, look in the mirror. Not only that, but because there's other people, we're co-creating realities, right? Mm. So, do you want to feed a reality of the other somebody else's building that's really nasty and horrible? Mm -hmm. Or do you want to feed a reality that another person's building that's beautiful and full of butterflies? Mm. Which reality do you want to feed, right? Right. And support. So right. that's part of it. You know, it's like your own reality, but whose reality are you also empowering and giving energy to? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you're participating in. Absolutely. And people in negative realities, they will try and pull you in oh, all yeah. the time. Oh, yeah. They will try and make you, uh, because they need energy for their reality, right? Right, And right. they need players right. to play roles. Religions and politics and no, you. business. Oh, me? You. Oh, yeah. yeah okay. They need you to play a role in their oh. reality. Oh, sure. The good guy, the bad guy, the whatever, oh, yeah. right? Yeah. If I like it, I'll do it. <laughs> exactly. But in the past, you <laughs> thought you had to. Oh, right. Right, right yeah. Oh. It's like, I can't help it. That person is in my reality. I can't get rid of them. Right, but I don't exactly, have any choice. Exactly. Well, they're doing it to me. Exactly. I'm a victim here. Exactly. I but can't that's, do it. That's changed, right? So yeah. now it's about really committing to the reality and embodying the new program in your body. And really, really, really doing it, you know? And that's part of it. Whose reality do you want to co-create? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. people who are really creating nasty stuff, just push them out of your life. Right. I mean, right. life is so short. Just... Yeah, and those people who are creating beautiful realities, pull them into your Pull them in. Yeah. Push out, yeah. pull in. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, have interactions, chat with, and, and um, support those beautiful realities. Right, yeah. right, right. Yeah, I, I've had such a hard time with getting, uh, going down the rabbit hole with all the conspiracy theories right. because I've had you know, that radio show for, you know, 10 years or so, and I've talked to so many people, and, and you know, I just get, I just get hooked like a, right. like a fish, you know, on a fish hook, and it's like, I'm up there flopping on the deck, and, you know, and, and I'm just one of these fish, and there's thousands of other fish saying, oh, get trails, oh my God, oh, we're vaccines, oh. and it's like, it's just got to be so tiring that, I, I was, okay, I'll just jump back in the ocean, <laughs> forget about all this crap. So, yeah, and uh, just swim around and enjoy the view and, yeah. you know, uh, cuddle up to your a uh, few other fish and have some good little niblets in Hawaii down there. Look at the sea anemone, yeah. an enemy. <laughs> However you say that, I don't know. So, yeah, and I've learned a lot of that from you, just uh, I was ab absorbing it. Yeah. You know, it's like, it's just common it's sense. It is common sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Oh, well, this is kind of an interesting question. Um, is, uh, is there one Mother Divine or Divine Mother of the whole universe? Does she have a specific name or form, or she abides in all things or both? 
I don't think that there is a divine anything for the entire universe. I think we are it, right? Yeah. And it's like yeah. we're forming it. Yeah. Um, the, the, there is like a like a consciousness that we are at that we might call a divine consciousness of the universe. Um, that's us at a way way more aware level, right? Like our awareness is huge by the time we embody that or mm -hmm. can perceive it as ourselves. Yeah. Um, but that doesn't have a sex. And right. if you don't believe me, just look at your soul, right? Not your body, your soul, your or your 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 identity, your you know what that guy, um, what's his name? Uh, that British guy that points and says, Now I look from here, who who do you see? And you'd see nothing, right? Not what you think you see, you think you might see like a face, but actually you're not. You're pointing in, you're seeing like a perception, right? Mm -hmm. A viewpoint. Right, one so, viewpoint. So, that mm. viewpoint, does that viewpoint have a sex? Is it a girl or a girl? No. No, <laughs> no. So, why would the universe be a mother or a father or right. whatever? Right, right, duh. And it's such a limited viewpoint also to think in those terms, yeah. male or female, because there's creatures on the, even in just this planet, who don't have sex. Right. Right? They're not female or male. And some of the fish switch. Yeah, and some of them are both. Um, yeah. Or some of them switch, like that frog as well. And yeah, there's uh, that gay frog. <laughs> yes. <laughs> there, so, there was a big uproar about that, the gay <laughs> frog. Oh my God, nobody, you know, nobody wanted it because right. it was gay. So, <laughs> <laughs> So, it's like to think in terms of Divine Mother or Divine Fathers is a very limited way that we think of as humans, brought in by religion, because religions like to limit us in our concepts of divinity. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. that's what I think. I don't think there's a mother, mm -hmm. you know, whatever, mm -hmm. or father, mm -hmm. whatever. Yeah. That's my point. My view yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, I agree with you. I think that... Uh, it, the more fragmented we are and the more mired in duality, the more we tend to see things in, in that, in either or. But then right. there's also a lot of uh, programming going on to get us to think in, is it this way or that? that way. Is he evil or good? Right. You know, good or bad? Mother or father. <laughs> Mother, and, and journalism has had to, or they haven't had to, but they have condensed things down into sound bites, which are in duality. Mm. So if you just stop and you find yourself asking, well, is it this way or that? All you have to do is just say, neither. it's neither. <laughs> it couldn't be because that's just two options out of an infinite array of, uh, of eternal things. And you could just say, okay, well, they're just stuck in duality. You know, <laughs> let them be. Oh, there's another really funny thing. Um, I'm doing an event in Spain in July 23rd. Uh, my last public event. Wow. And people from Spain have been calling me for interviews. Wow. And one of the, one of the common <laughs> questions, yeah. it's really odd because it's different, you know, the culture is so Spain, different. In Spain, yeah. In Spain, yeah, our Spanish speakers have a different concept of culture. So I haven't been asked this question for many, many years now because people just gave up. Right here, like, because I, most of the interviews I do are in English, but there isn't many in Spanish. Right. So it's like, like doing the same questions that I did like five years ago or something. Oh my gosh. Right? And one of the questions is, well, if uh, for all the people who are asleep and don't believe you mm. with regards to the, you know, it's like, what, how do I describe this, you know, the fact that I constructed as a singular being when I incarnated, I would often simplify it by saying I came from Source. Unfortunately, that was hijacked and made holy, right? Oh, so it's yes, like, of course. It was taken course. out of context right. and stuff, right. and it's like, yeah, but right. so are you that I came out of right. Source. So, right. so, but they would interpret it like, oh, you're holy and different and an avatar and all these things. Right. So I had to change that. So, oh. but in Spanish, they haven't, you know, they still perceive it that way. So they say, well, how do you convince people that that's where you came from? And oh. my response, of course, <laughs> is, 
I don't. Right. And I have no interest in convincing anybody of anything. <laughs> right. That's what I always this loved about you. My reality. Right. You know, and you right. can like it or take it or leave it. Right. It's fine. You don't have to impose your reality on me. Mm -hmm. And I have no interest right. in imposing <laughs> my reality onto you. Right. So, no, I'm not going to convince them. Right. <laughs> and if right. somebody's asleep and they don't know about empowerment or, you know, it's like processing their fears and they will bring them uh, into a, a better life and everything because they're no longer ruled by fear. Mm -hmm. How do you convince them to do that? I don't. No. So they can no. either want to try it or not. Right. It's up to them, right. really. Right. But it's it's the same, you know. It's like it's one of those things, <laughs> duality or or the, the viewpoints that are very small. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really matter because um, if a person is ready to accept or maybe look at a different viewpoint, a different insight. Whether it's right or wrong, it doesn't matter. Even being open to looking at another viewpoint, it's already in a huge expansion mm -hmm. of awareness. Mm -hmm. you know? Yes. So. Yes. Yeah, yeah uh, and I I highly recommend um, maintaining an open mind. Yeah. Because it, it, the second that you make a, a decision that you know something, you you cut off right. all information coming in about. Anything related to that subject? Well, I know that there are no such thing as ETs. Uh, that they were right. there, <laughs> if they were here, they would, we would have seen them or we would have heard about them. And I'm not, the subject is closed. Right. And you know, so your your reality is going to be in a box, tiny, tiny little match bar, maybe a little grain of sand. I don't know, even small. But, yeah. So, so for example, the person who asks about the divine mother, I can't remember the words they used, yeah. but that's already stepping out of the box. Right? Because they were taught probably ah. that it was a father, right? Right. A father. Right. So as soon as I mean, even thinking out of that box yes. is, is huge, yes. right? Yes, that's right. Huge. That's right. So uh, there is there are no bad questions. There are no no. <laughs> what have we reached a a point where there's a change in the cycles and. From your perspective, since you uh, had only had a commitment to be here only, <laughs> it seems like we're <laughs> until 2017. Only? <laughs> it didn't feel like only. <laughs> it never definitely, oh, it didn't feel like that to me either. It was like, well, it was like that with 2012 too. I know, right? I never yeah. thought that 2012 would get here. <laughs> I, oh, I, oh, I won't be alive, blah, blah, blah. And it came and, and it went. went. <laughs> <laughs> and we come and we go. Uh, yeah. And so, I uh, mean, who knows uh, what. I'm opening more to the possibility of of everything being in the same dimension, or the possibility that there are, you know, infinite parallel dimensions in this same space, mm -hmm. and probably there are astral entities and etheric entities and so on, and, and you know, if if there may be all aspects of ourselves, yeah. you know, and we can only see what we can see because the lower can't see the higher. Mm -hmm. And there's probably a reason, good, very good reason for that. Right. And a lot of the time, the higher can't see the lower, too. Yes. Right? Yes, that's right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Vibrations very true. Stuff, like very narrow bands of vibrational frequencies of existence or reality. Mm -hmm. People tend to just see where they're at. Yes. Uh, but haven't you noticed, I, this is a really important uh and it's, it's an observation and question at the same time. Haven't you noticed, or have you noticed, let me ask you so that you have the space to answer freely, have you noticed that there is a surge of truth-telling and people that are curious about what's really going on and, and uh, people who are hiding things just being outed for corruption and, and you know, killing and murder and of the whole thing, whatever it is, being bad, whatever you think that is, you know, doesn't it seem that that's just there's just this avalanche of, yes. and it's just, and that it's the tip of the iceberg. Right. It's because we know that it comes from the top down. Right. So when one person gets singled out for being, you know, Bernie made off with five billion dollars, well. That's chump change, yes. you know. What about the quadrillion dollars? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. And the the day before nine one one, the five trillion dollars disappeared. Five trillion, and, you know. I mean, it's like, 
And that's and that's nothing. Yeah. And these the people that are playing these games at such a uh, at such a um, broad level compared to our little games, the, their games of Monopoly uh, are almost inconceivable. Mm -hmm. Like the idea that there's a second space program that's developed technology that's uh, the equivalent to or higher than Star Trek, mm -hmm. existing right here on the planet that can take off and go whenever they want. Um, we've been told through channeled information that um, there's a there's a ring pass not around the earth and they can't get out and reptilian bases are being destroyed. What do you think about all this stuff that's coming out about uh, Corey Good and David Wilcox? Do you follow any of that stuff? Um, the galactic this and that and the other thing? No, oh. I found it to be rather dramatic and uh, yeah. also yeah. very distracting. Yes, distracting. And also irrelevant because one of the things that Growing up, I was told um, my mother, I think it was my mother or my father, I can't remember which one, they were both politicians. Oh, right? yes. And one of them said, uh, we need to get the populace to vote, right? I think it was one of my mom or my dad, I can't mm -hmm. remember, said, we need to get the people to vote, right? And, and, I, and he said, and I can't understand, or she said, I can't understand why they're not voting. And the other parent said, well, the, the farmer in the field below the castle, he'll be a farmer in the field below the castle no matter what the king or queen or who the king or queen is up in the castle. Mm -hmm. right? His law is not going to change. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. So in a way, with regards to whether we get invaded by mm -hmm. Martians mm -hmm. or we get invaded by... Um, I don't know, fleas, because it was too hot a summer. Um, or we get invaded by fear through the television channels. Right? Oh, yes. And the, and the technology stuff. Oh, yes, yes, Or we yes. get invaded by reptilians or whatever. Nanotechnology, self-replicating nanobots. Or whomever, whatever. It's not going to change your life, mm -hmm. basically. Mm -hmm. it's, your life is what you choose to make it. And what you try, what you decide to embody is going to, how you're going to experience life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's like somebody said, I can't remember who it was, who said, there are not really bad or sad times or tough times. It's just how we choose to feel about them, right? Mm -hmm. How about, so the, if aliens were trying to destroy us, aliens have technologies that could have wiped us out. In two seconds flat, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. So anybody who says that aliens are trying to come over and take us over or destroy us, I don't buy it because they have technology that can wipe us out in two seconds flat and leave everything else alive, right? Because they, oh, yes, they, they, right. they, the genetic marker. Right, <laughs> right. They have but, that technology, yeah. yeah. I mean, exactly. Humans, humans have been developing it. They've killed yeah. thousands of birds that just fly off. Yeah. You know, the Plop. Plop on the frog, <laughs> yeah. thousands of them. They're the They've done cows, it. It's and, done. All sorts of things. So they know how to do it. They know, yes, absolutely. So, yeah, there's that technology, and um, yeah, we're still here. So <laughs> don't give me any of that, those stories. The financial collapse has been happening now 20 years or something. <laughs> oh, I, keep, wait, I, I, keep think, I, I keep thinking that, you know, they can't hold this together. Right. And it, we, we know it's all manipulated and rigged, and it's a game, and that they... And yet... The game goes on because we keep playing it. Right. And that yeah. relates to what you said about, you know, choice and, you know, we're all agreeing to use money. Yes. What happens if we decide, hey, I'm going to take all my money out of the bank or most of it, leave enough in there to, you know, get to keep an account, but I'm going to take charge of my own money and I'm going to turn it into assets like land right. to turn into sacred space or uh, for my family or friends and, and, and share things. Right. Because I can't even possibly spend the hundreds of thousands of dollars I have in my retirement account, or the millions, <laughs> and then millionaires are jealous of billionaires, and billionaires are jealous of trillionaires, and then quadrillionaires, you know, and it goes on and on and on, big fish, little, little fish. And so uh, it just, it seems like there could be a moment, a hundredth monkey moment, 
it, does that seem like a possibility to you? Yeah, it definitely does. And you know, it's like what you were saying about putting money into land and things. A lot of people are buying gold and silver, but they're not going to be able to do anything with it because it'll be useless if anything did happen. That's right. So why not invest it instead in a community garden? Yes, right? where everybody not, can. Yeah, yes. not only will you be able to feed yourself, you can, the entire neighborhood can feed itself. Yes. Right? And, and, and have Get some a, goats. Yeah, yeah. Well, you told me that years ago. Get some chickens. Yes. Chickens. Well, unfortunately, we have foxes here. I know. And, you know, you can't have chickens in the hen house because they get eaten. <laughs> uh, we lost three cats that way. But, um, you know, maybe things have changed. Uh, that's an idea I have. Maybe I can let go of that idea, and the chickens will be just fine, and they'll <laughs> new, roost up in the, in the tree limbs. Exactly, yeah. You know? Yeah. So I, I just realized I just let go of an old idea. Yeah. So that's how easy you it is. You turn your idea and... Some really smart chickens. Yeah. <laughs> that's your on the, on the so screen. yeah, no, that's a that's a wonderful idea, and, and the and the and the level of emotional connection, which is the shared heart of the heartbeat of the planets, mm -hmm. and and the galaxy, and all of these things synchronizing, may have some kind of uh, extremely powerful emotional force. Mm -hmm. You know, that's that 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 love. I hate to use the word love because, it, you know... It's more than love. I mean, love is such a small word. Yes. It doesn't encompass the whole thing. What do you... How... Do, how can you put it into words? Yeah, you need lots of words. Lots of words. I like to, to use joy, like love, but that's just a summary too. Joy, like love, satisfaction, inspiration, good strawberries and cream. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's loads of things. Um, I was thinking just now about also about the... A friend of mine um, talked to me about feeling a massive shift towards the 3D on the planet, right? Okay. Um, and he lives in a very high density area. So he would feel it that way, right? Mm -hmm. Because this year is when we commit to embody the paradigm that we choose. So those people who are choosing a really thick 3D life mm -hmm. are really embodying it and stepping into it, yeah. those individuals who are choosing to have an empowered reality are stepping into that. And so a lot of people are feeling, and other people also cold, but they're like in high density situations. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I woke up with a feeling of frustration, anger, disappointment, and it felt like a big metal shield in my back, Ooh, you know? Wow. And when I looked at it, I thought, well, that's my egoic construct. Uh, thinking we failed oh, you know, because all those people, you know, we've lost them now, whatever. So. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But that's the savior energy. There's the ego, right? Right, right. So right, right. I became really curious about it and I just let it kind of dissolve and express, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it went away. And what I found also was that those energies were being fed too, artificially. Yes. Yeah, energies artificially. Of yeah, artificially, um, but the energies of disappointment and frustration, anger, and all that, yes. and sadness, yes. were being fed. And I thought, oh, that's very interesting because yes. if I had subscribed to that, I would have given power to more people becoming even denser, right? Yes. Because yes. like, oh my God, we lost it all. Yes. We haven't. Yes, right. We haven't. Right. I mean, that's what you're going to see in the right, news and right. the in the news and everywhere else, probably. Yeah. But the other side, the fact that, okay, so it's not as big a number of individuals on the planet who chose to have an empowered reality, but they're freaking powerful, right? Because yes. they're empowered. Yes. Without a fear, you just instantly become empowered, you know? Mm -hmm. You start choosing your own life. Yeah, yeah. And it's cool. Yeah, and and this whole stage play about the politicians and the presidency and all that—that's another thing that that's I thought was going to. <laughs> yeah, I thought that would have wound down and people would have seen through it by now and it would have come to an end. Right. But it gets more Worse. comical and more Beavis and Butthead every year. It's almost like it's pushing the limits. Like how <laughs> thick yeah. are you? It, yeah, are you still buying this? Yeah, are you still swallowing this? Yeah. Like, <laughs> Oh, they're still following it. You know, it's like so, but I mean, it's, it's easy to be, I think it's easy to be, um, I don't know, maybe a little bit, um, 
word uh, arrogant about it, you know, mm. because we can see what's happening. Um, but other people really, they, that's a reality, you know? Yeah, yeah. And it's like super important and full of fear and everything. And we talked a little bit before saying, well, you can't, you can't save them. I mean, we're not saviors here. Right. We're just people right. who are embodying the new paradigm. And if other people want to embody <laughs> the new paradigm and want to hang out with us, it's great. Right. right, right. And people who don't want to embody the new paradigm, that's fine too, but I'm not going to hang out with them. <laughs> right. <laughs> so it's like, I don't right. want to play that game anymore. Right, exactly, exactly. Uh, that's exactly how I feel too. And it's as if, you know, we're... We come in with a frequency, uh, and, and maybe some people are AM stations and other people are FM, but you can change the dial. Exactly, yeah. And, yeah, and you're not limited exactly. to just what you came in with, right. but you have at least the frequency that you came in with, and you don't have to do anything exactly. to broadcast it, because right. you're on your own station. <laughs> you know, everybody's got God in their own universe, exactly, so, yeah. you know, we're all broadcasting, whether we're washing the dishes or having sex or working or meditating or, or traveling, sleeping, yeah, sleeping is good, yeah. and dreaming, I love dreaming, yeah. um, you know, that makes me wonder, where where are we when we dream, I mean, how does that yeah. juxtapose, what happens? I think it depends on the person, you know, um, some individuals will work on their stuff, right, 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 other people will go and do mystical work while they're right. dreaming, right, um, we're busy 24-7, yeah, right? Yeah, pretty much, yeah. yeah. But I mean, there, there's just, no time, but... Right, and I think that the soul coming out of the physical body uh, every single night, is, I, I think it's because the physical body needs a break from the soul, uh, and also because the soul needs a break from the physical body. Yes, yeah. that also, makes sense. Yeah. It makes a lot of sense, it really does. Um, uh, yeah, that makes an awful lot of sense, yeah. And, and so everything is just fine like it is. There's nothing to change. Like Ram Dass said uh, a million years ago, and he's still alive, be here in his book, Be Here Now. You know, there's nothing to do or, or to become. You're already it, and here you are. And wherever you are, there you are. Yes. <laughs> so, um, you know, I, it's getting harder for me to ask questions that are meaningful uh, because, I, you know, for me... I, I kind of, I, I'm kind of like you, but I do know that most people are really concerned with this whole ascension process, quote unquote. And we're all going to 5D. We're all going to 5D. Everybody's going to go to 5D. Well, that ain't the truth, <laughs> and no, that's not the way it is. And I see this push to get to 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 um, limit the linear dimensions that we're allowed to climb because oh. Right. 5D will be so much more vast and there will be love and less duality and this and that and the other thing. But if Timothy J. Glenn is right and we are in a nine-dimensional galactic intergalactic matrix run by AI, then 5D compared to 9D is not big shit. <laughs> it ain't that much. In fact, you're still in the matrix until you get out the other side. And You know, Carla Fox talks about traveling beyond 12D. And I... I thought, well, you could go to a thousand, million, jillion, exactly. trillion D. Yes. You know, and, and then beyond matter, the material realms, there are... Another trillion, billion. Right. Dimensions. That are not even in matter. Exactly. That are completely, that make Different. up the rest. Yeah, yeah that we can't even conceive of. So. Exactly. We can't even conceive them because our reality is matter. You know? Yes. And so, like, don't get stuck in your head. Right. You know, and, and like you said... Um, I don't think that there is any actual shift to a particular dimension that we all are sharing, and, and so I don't buy into all that stuff. And you have pointed out that the chakra system is another thing. All of these old systems that come from the Hindu gods and the blue gods and this god and that god, as far as I'm concerned, all of that has to be relegated to the past and let go of. Because we are the gods walking the earth. Yes. And, and in spite of the fact that the, the Rochelles and Rockefellers and beyond them uh, tell us that they're the gods and the Bush family and a thousand planes of light, <laughs> yes, 
Um, in spite of the fact that they think that they're royalty and they have bloodlines that prove it, they're insane. And, you know, to me, that's the insane world, and everything is backwards and topsy-turvy. So the, what makes more sense to live your life in the moment and don't worry about where you're going to be in the future because the only moment we have is now. Wow, yeah. And if you're worried about the future, you're not going to be there when you get there. You'll be worried about 70. Yes. You'll be in five, you think, oh, when are we going to get to 70? Oh, when we get to 70, it'll be so much fun. We won't have all this awful control systems and, <laughs> low and, and there's, there's smog. And, you know, I didn't think there was going to be anything like that. When we get to 70. Well, when we get to 90, <laughs> wow, we're going to be rocking. Man, who will create man, manifest here. And so, you know, all of that stuff is just a head game. If you're going to play head games, you might as well play ones that are beautiful interesting. Yeah. and interesting and, and, with, and hang out with your friends. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And not have anybody uh, be a guru to look up to. Right. And if anybody starts to put you on that pedestal, kick them off. Yeah. You know, it's just like, well, no, 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 don't put me up there. You're, <laughs> let's put you up there. Let's put a crown See on you. you. Like <laughs> yeah, you try it for a while. You know, you wear the <laughs> yeah, gold like crown. It. <laughs> so, you know, uh, yes, yeah, and, and it's just, we have such a tendency, well, of course it's a running program. It is a running program. It is a run, just like the depression. Uh, and I wanted to make a point out of that, is that when I get, I, I go through some terrible, severe depression, and I start buying into the what you said, all those bad feelings, all of those feelings, mm -hmm. they're not bad feelings, they're just feelings, and those feelings are running programs and if you are run down, or you know whatever it is for you, like uh, for you it's not lack of sleep and food, I think, and for me yeah. it's a couple of yeah. Food, water, and sleep. Sleep yeah. can take you out, and and same here. So uh, and, and not enough sex. All yeah, right, <laughs> yeah, cut that out. Okay, so food, food not enough food, food, not enough water, water, water not enough sleep, and not enough sex. Yes. Yes. <laughs> See, she agrees with me. Totally. She's got to be a guru. She knows yes. that She knows about that. Where's my golden? Oh, crown? I'll get it. <laughs> I actually have it in the other room. I saved it, and I'm going to get it right now. This was from your birthday in 2014. <laughs> Where there you go. go. Oh, thank you. My loyal highness. Thank you. Oh, I shall bless you. Oh, I shall bless you. Thank you. Please, my dear bless goddess. You. Oh, oh, I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. Oh, please, please accept me. Oh, can I ask you a question? Can I touch your shoe? Oh, I touched oh, your shoe. Oh, my God. Oh, I touched an eight man's oh, shoe. <laughs> I'm going to look cute with my crown. I'm going to keep it. <laughs> Good. Because I didn't know, I didn't want to throw it away. And it was on the, it was on the, you know, the fireplace thing. And I was trying to clean the house before you got here. And oh my God, it was crown. yesterday, it was just packed. It was like New York City on commuter time. Isn't that so beautiful? And I had a friend come in and clean. And, you know, I did a little whir whirling around here myself. I wonder where my Crown I lost my crown somewhere in my travels. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, I think that's really important to not get hung up, as you said, on on all of this bullshit, uh, whether it's, you know, worrying about worrying is, is, a, is a thing. Yes. Uh, fear, fear, we talked about that with Helene, about she was afraid, my mother was afraid of getting cancer. She had both breasts surgically removed. And uh, Helene has had, you know, so we know that there are a lot of fear programs right oh, now. Yeah. They're, they're turned up to high. Yes. So when people, I see a lot of questions here about, you know, I'm losing, I, I'm trying to do all the right things. I'm following my, my joy. I'm a yoga teacher. I'm a this person, but I, you know, I have no money and, I, and things have never been harder. What do you say about that? The, the money thing, well, there's a lot of programs. The people who came here to do or wake up are particularly targeted to reject money because money is power to do. It's mm -hmm. basically mm -hmm. cheap. You can do whatever you want with money. Mm 
Mm -hmm. Whatever you want, do whatever you can do projects. Oh yeah. Lots of things, oh, yeah. right? So the programs kick in that if you do any type of energy work or light work or whatever, um, environment work, you cannot be receiving money because imagine it, if a thousand or a million light workers become millionaires or billionaires or billionaires, <laughs> What would that do to Ooh, the planet, my right? Goodness, wow. If you had a billion dollars right now, how would you change this city, town, neighborhood? Wow. Wow. Right? <laughs> it would be like an amusement park. <laughs> <laughs> you would do a lot. I do right? a lot. I would be so fun. Yes, because it's power to do. Yeah, right? yeah. Ability to do is power. Yeah. Money is power. Therefore, the programs kick in to stop you being powerful. To put you out, and it's very distracting because if you're starving to death, you're not going to be very uh, happy while you're doing the energy work on their customer, whatever. Mm -hmm. Right. Or right. well, you might not even have an office right. where you can do it. Have people, like I said, I want people to consider this um, the possibility that they can embody their new paradigm right now, right? Right. right. Without apology, be themselves go back to that original vibration that they are, they came in with, and really step into that without um, without doing things because other people want them to. Right. Or because right. of fear. But because really they want to. I mean, life is so short. Our like, lifespan is so tiny. Yeah, <laughs> gee, here we are almost at 2017 already. I know. Never thought we'd make it. I know. <laughs> Here we are. And here we are. Yeah. Well, and then conversely, maybe we'll be sitting here forever. I know. <laughs> we'll be meeting here. You'll have white hair. No. And I'll have no... Whiter hair. Yeah, I'll have me bald. <laughs> totally bald. Yes. And I'll go, oh, and, you know, what did you think about 2024? Wasn't oh, that a gosh. year? <laughs> or we could reverse <laughs> aging. Yeah, I like it. Like Half of the teenagers. Yeah. <laughs> wee, wee, yes. wee. And buy locate and be yes. able to go anywhere we want and yes. just, you know, instantaneously we're snowboarding down a mountain yeah. and we don't die because right. there is no death. Right. Nothing feeds on anything else, so we don't have to worry about things being killed anymore. And what's better, be eating a vegetable with eyes or a, a you know, a cow <laughs> or a cat or a, you know, whatever. And so we won't have those things to deal with. All this fit, multi, this feeding frenzy. I know it's weird. And I, I know that money is going to become obsolete. Yeah. And it seems pretty soon. I, uh, it may be maybe, twenty years. Yeah, so maybe within our own lifetime. You know? Ten years, yeah, maybe. 10, yeah. Years, yeah. But I see. I feel like that's really up for everybody. People. I feel it's like the collectors. Yeah. 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 They're they're getting fed up. And, and this business of having to go to work and work with corporations. And the corporations have sewn things up beautifully. I mean, they've got a, a figure eight a formation. They're, you know, uh, Dick Cheney's on the board of all these, you know, and so and so's on this one. They're all good buddies and they're quadrillionaires. They're mining the far side of the moon. They have a Mars base. They probably have bases on all the planets and Saturn, you know, and probably in other galaxies. One of the things that's interesting about money. Yeah. Right? Is that when people say, well, I don't have enough money, yeah. okay, and I need more money, or things like that, for survival, like, you know, well, how will I live? Well, actually, when you drink water from your faucet, you're paying for services, not for water. Because you chose to live in a city, mm -hmm. right? and you chose to have mm -hmm. that service because it's very mm -hmm. convenient. Mm -hmm. So instead of spending half of your day walking to the river, a river right. collecting water and bringing it back, right. you chose to go down the stairs or into your kitchen and switch on the faucet and drink the water. Yeah. That's what you're paying for. Yeah. When yeah. you say, I haven't got enough money for my rent or my mortgage, what you're saying is... Huh. I choose to live in this beautiful, comfortable house, right. and I want to pay for this beautiful, comfortable house, and this is what I choose, mm -hmm. and this is what I don't have money for right now. Mm -hmm. But it's not about living on the planet. I used to say, I mean, it's insane that we have to pay to live on the planet, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But actually, it's our choices of, of the services that we receive from other human beings. Mm -hmm. 
So it's like your house, where it is, the, are you paying for rent or land, um, the services, your garbage being taken away every day, your water coming into the faucet, your waste going through the toilet, mm -hmm. um, away mm -hmm. from you, so you don't have to deal with it. Um, and all these things are what you're paying for. Mm -hmm. Services. Mm -hmm. Not to survive. Mm -hmm. Because there are places that you could go to today where you could live from the land, you know? Mm -hmm. um, fishing or picking up things from the sea or vegetables from... Grow vegetables mm -hmm. yourself. But then you spend 90% of your day, day just... Even with your physical body, yeah, right, right? You're trying to get right. somewhere to wash yourself, yeah, somewhere yeah. to sleep, somewhere to something to eat. That's where you're going to be spending all of your time with. And you don't want to do that. No, so what do you no. do? You live in a beautiful house, or maybe not such a beautiful house, but uh, in a house with water, toilets, a bed, a roof, yeah, warm yeah. or cold, depending on what weather you're in, yeah, right? That yeah, can be either cold or yeah. warm, and then what's outside. So you're paying for services. And... It's like, how do we, um, one thing that maybe we can start daydreaming, how do we uh, convert all those services to something that is no longer needed to be paid for? Mm -hmm. So we could have all the services that we love as human beings mm -hmm. and not have to pay for them because we have figured out, engineered socially, mm -hmm. a way in which we can get them without having to pay for them. So right. I think that's the way to go rather than inventing a new system of whatever's yeah. financial whatever's yeah. or community whatever's. I think it's a way to maybe it is about community, maybe it's a new dimensional community. Yeah. Um but how do you uh, figure that out, you know? Right. We it does it seems like we're it, it seems like we're in that process. That after all these thousands of years of being, you know, of having caste systems and you know the rich and the poor and the, the divisions, that we're we're we've done it all, and we've done it all so many times that it's like okay, we we played the rich man poor man game, we played the you know skin color game, we played the sex uh, division of the sex game, and uh, you know. We've done it so many times, it's like, what can we do that's different? Mm -hmm. And how can we empower ourselves and each other to, to do exactly what you're saying? And, and to be free to be creative and have that time and have these things all just, well, what am I going to do? <laughs> what am I going to do with all that free time? Isn't that funny though? Because when people retire, often they die. Yeah, because yeah. yes. I've seen it over and over again. Yes. Somebody will work really yeah. hard all their life. So that they can yeah. retire. Three days later, they're dead. Yeah. What's up with that? Yeah, what is up with that? So, and, and isn't it interesting that uh, the, bi the biologists that have uh, proven that when a person is in fear or anger, that the DNA coils and tightens. And when you're in a state of love, it unwinds wow, and becomes idea. like a ladder. Wow. That was Bruce Lipton, I believe. He was, oh, I love Bruce Lipton. Is he wonderful? <laughs> yes, yes And he, and then and, and, um, what do we, do they, do we know anyway? Remember that came out about six or seven years ago? Yeah. And they had all these weird things like nothing actually touches anything else. Right. So if I touch you, yeah. I'm not touching, touch nothing's you. touching. Yeah. I'm not really touching you. Right. I mean, I felt something. There was a, you know, I knew it was an Anelia being, <laughs> and that was f supposed to be flesh, but I touched it, and it was just like, not they don't touch. Yeah, yeah. And so that changes your sex life totally. Oh <laughs> if nothing's really touching, what's going on here? <laughs> Is it just a game that some ETs are playing to, you know, I don't well, know. Well, we are the ETs, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. We, yeah. Hello, yeah. we are the galactic and the beyond the galactic and the... Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, we're playing different levels of our own games. Yeah. Um, but it's like the, the physical aspects could be that, you know. We, when we think of ourselves as oneness, I mean, a lot of people use that word, right? To yeah, mean everything. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yes, we are. But at this physical level, right. we're two people. Right, right. right. And we we're, have yes. to 
you know, go to the store, buy food because we have physical bodies. Right, and eating. right, right. We do need a house, and it's very nice to open the faucet and there's yes, water. Yes, it is wonderful. So, I like that. Yeah, that was a good one. And it's in that experience, in that body, in that life, that we can now really express our vibration and our frequency and really embody what we believe or think or want to be the new paradigm right now, this mm -hmm. moment. Mm -hmm. Don't wait till tomorrow. Right. Don't wait until you've uh, done a diet or a cleansing or, or right. become a vegetarian or right. start meditating. Don't wait. Just do it right this second. Yeah, yeah, right. Activate your own DNA. Yes, absolutely. Don't go. Don't wait for somebody. Oh, I've got a DNA activation in a week. I'm going to wow. be totally different. <laughs> well, guess what? You can do it. Yeah, do it right now. Yeah. Activate your, and like you pointed out about your chakras, uh, you didn't. You came in without them. Right. <laughs> and uh, Carla Fox is uh, a huge proponent of, of removing the artificial, imaginary systems that we create. And you, you tell a hilarious story about that, where you went to a psychic fair, yes. and she, she said, well, I can't find your chakras. And you looked inside and realized, oh my oh, God, I don't have any. Right. I so you, make some. <laughs> you had to make them. <laughs> but I could only make, like, work ones <laughs> all across. And I says, well, just look a bit higher, right, high, high frequency, look higher frequency. And she, oh, I see them now. Oh, they're all white. <laughs> it was really funny. Um, but again, uh, in, the, in the Ascension 101 course that I do, I do use the construct that are chakras. Okay. Right? Because okay. a lot of people have them. And what okay. are, one of the interesting things that I've huh. heard is that when people do that unit several times, all of a sudden, they don't have them anymore. Yeah, and I read it from like multiple different sources. Interesting. This is normal. I went to do the unit with the chakras, and they're not there anymore. What happens is don't wow. worry about it. <laughs> wow, that's yeah, interesting. Don't worry about it. And I had no idea that was going to happen because that's yeah. like it's just like an intuitive work of that came in, right? Right, right. And it makes sense that uh, rather than becoming more fragmented and having twelve. Chakras, you know, whether they talk about the galactic chakra and the right. one, you know, uh, but you know, we, people work with seven, and then some say, Oh, we're going to go into 12. <laughs> oh, won't we be special then? Well, you're going to be more fragmented, so you've got 12 different things you've got to manage, right. and you know, it's a bigger sandbox, mm -hmm. but you are splitting into more mirrored pieces and that mere disco ball in the yeah. sky. Whereas if you collapsed all the dimensions and collapsed all the chakras and you became a ball of light from within, you can float anywhere you want and you don't have to worry about these other fragments floating around. Oh, I got a fragment <laughs> over here. Whoop. Get a, you gotta get this one. Oh, my crown chakra. Oh, my God. Where is it gone? Yeah. <laughs> it flew away. I got a Where's my 12 chakra? I got a crown chakra. <laughs> she got a crown chakra right there. And you can see it. You can actually see it. Yeah. I'm special. <laughs> Did you not know I was special? Well, I, I know, but I, I never heard you say it. <laughs> this is the proof. That's the proof. proof. There we go. You've seen it first here. See? This is She's proof. her crown. That's a proof. Yeah. You can literally see That's my right. crown chakra. That's right. And if you put your fingers there, you can actually touch it. Amazing. <laughs> oh, my God. I don't know if I can touch it. It's so bright. I know. Right? It's a it's blinding. Old. It's blinding. blinding. It really is. It's, it's almost too much. <laughs> I should shield it for you there. Yeah, oh, thank you. you. Oh, that's so relieving. That's such a relief. It's like looking directly into the sun. Oh, my goodness. I mean, it's just so beautiful. Because I'm enlightened. That's right. That's right. And your aura is just, oh, so yes, basking in your aura. Thank you. Incredible. Yes. Oh. I bless you, Oh. Oh. my son. Oh, I feel it. Oh, my God. I'm having these waves of energy. I need a fan. Give me a fan. Oh my God. I'll have to borrow some of your fans. You got enough oh, yes, fans. Yeah, no, you got forty-five thousand of them. My God, I've got about a hundred or two. <laughs> I'll borrow some Facebook. of yours. We're talking about Facebook, right? Right, yeah. right. But um, you know, uh, what about this thing about? Um, we love to joke around. That's what we do. <laughs> Thank God we love to joke around. You know, I think that uh, whatever it is that's out there has a good sense of humor. Oh, yeah. Because uh, look, look at this wacky world we're in. 
I mean, you got to have a sense of humor to live on planet Earth today. Um, but what about this idea that there's a heaven and Earth emerging, and we're at the sixth, you know, uh, extinction or uh, the transition, and that the cells, which are co are uh, all oh, conscious and sentient, are going to be uh, spiritualized, and matter will become spiritual, and, and spirit will become matter. What about that concept that, that, that everything is going to be, at some point, um, spiritual, that matter will be spiritualized, and there won't be a third dimension? I don't think... I don't, Forget I, it. I don't think so. I no, she said no. Hated it. I know. I don't like that one. Okay, you don't like at that all. one. All right. Because it's like, why There's something there better and something lower. Well, yeah. I don't think it's lower. I mean, it's, it's different dimensions. The third dimension just means physicality at this solidity, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean the light, dark paradigm. It doesn't mean power over others. Mm. Right, right. An experience in this solid solidity that is absolutely wonderful, mm. right? And you can learn to manifest people already learning to manifest all over the planet. And that, that's already made the solidity Right? Yeah, and yeah. changing their lives and doing different things with their lives or their day that's already making it a lot more pliable mm -hmm. so I don't think it's about getting rid of this solidity because it's kind of cool I love mm -hmm. I love butterflies I love hummingbirds I love trees and rocks I love rocks a lot oh I do too right I do too and they're solid yeah. in three-dimensional form yeah. You know, yeah, and they're, they're sentient. They're sentient, yeah. They're totally sentient. And they'll talk to you. And they're spiritual. Yes, right? they are. So, You're right. You're right. Um, I don't get that. Duh. It's like... Why you... are we trying to leave the... The body's bad. body's bad. No. <laughs> don't, we get out rid of the body. <laughs> Sex is bad. Forget it, folks. You're hearing it from the, the crown chakra now. Physicality is good. Everything is alive and talking to everything else, and I, I forget that. And once you embody, yeah, you're once right, you embody right. the new paradigm, yeah. the physical body, yeah. and your experience of it, and your life, everything shifts. So yeah. It does. yeah. And how, like, it's like, simple. It's really not complicated at all, right? Right. You need, like, those thingies, bodies, whatever. I don't feel like I'm talking about <laughs> You've got to um, do breathing exercises, exactly. and no, you have no to have a reverse Merkaba going, spinning right. in both directions at the same time, and you got to have your crown chakra pointed at the polaric star, and, the yeah, star? and, and the grounded direction. at the base of the earth, and oh my God. you've got to do these exercises, and, the and only I can sell them to you, because they're nineteen ninety five. <laughs> Get them here now while supplies last. <laughs> at the same time. At the same time. So anyways, uh, it's so simple. The main energy that's lowering our vibration is fear. Process your fear. It's super simple. If you don't have a fear processing exercise, go to my website. There's all the text of really simple one you can use right there. It's actually YouTube. So people have put it on YouTube. Yeah. So yeah. you can YouTube fear processing exercise in any events, and you can get it on YouTube, all sorts of places. Um, and then... Once that's done, you're no longer basing your decisions or your life on fear because it's no longer in your life. And that changes everything radically. It really does. Right. Just eliminating the lower frequencies. Yeah. Right, right. Because, because I mean, the average goes up, right? Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. It's like getting rid of commercials on the radio. Right. You know, we, we all know how we, we're, we're watching TV or listening to the radio, and it's like, you know, and then you lose your, your train of thought, and it's like, okay, where's the movie? Where am I? And then it comes back on, and oh, okay, I'm like, we'll just go back. And uh, all that programming is just that, the programming. So if you get rid of the lower density, the fear, then you're going to, it's like, oh, I just have an analogy. They're giving me an analogy. I'm channeling now, folks. Listen to this. Okay. My this, dearest, you have to start with my dearest. Oh, dear one, my dearest, my dear ones, dear ones, my dear ones. My dear ones. beloveds, my beloveds, I'm sorry. my oh, beloveds. Yes. Well, here's the analogy that we are sharing from above, and we want you to know 
that we of the oh, higher right. realms, Jackson, absolutely. Yes, yes very we of the higher realms truly <laughs> admire your progress. Oh, you have done so well, my <laughs> beloveds. Oh, we love you so much. Keep up the good work and buy lots of things. But the event I was going to share with you was this analogy about the balloon. And it's like being in a hot air balloon and you throw the sandbag over, and that yes. could, you could put fear on, on right? The sandbag. Imagine, imagine this now as a process. Yes. Okay, now we're doing a process. So you're in a, in a hot air balloon, you're Dorothy, you got the Wizard of Oz with you. Okay. No, he, one of them got, no, Wizard took off. She had to click her shoes. Well, anyway, you <laughs> figure it out on your own time. I'm confused enough as it is. Okay. But you, you're in the balloon, the hot air balloon. You're taking off from Oz, and you see this sandbag, and why can't I get off this planet? I hate it here. I want to leave. I want to leave. So you see the sandbag, and on it is written fear. And then you can see childhood fears, adult fears, and you throw it over. Yeah. And you start to kind of, whoo, oh, I'm rocking. Oh, okay, uh, what's this other one? Well, that's anger and resentment. You throw that one over. So you can just label these yourself. I just am inventing this right now. You do your own inventing. You, you look inside yourself. Not look. Don't look inside me, folks, because that's a that's a <laughs> terrible place to go. But you look inside yourself and you label these. And this is a visualization you can do and throw that sandbag over and then see yourself gently rising. Or if you prefer high technology, you can see yourself in a UFO and, <laughs> right. and thinking that you're going to be on the other end of the galaxy and boom, you're there. The thing is about leaving the planet. That's another problem that's running, so you have to be careful with that. Oh, yeah, okay. It's yes. not the planet you want to leave. Right. It's the bad experiences that you're having right now that you want to leave. Yes. And the bad yes. negative influences or people that are in your life yes. right now that you want to leave. Yes. And that's people that are using you exactly. or trying to control and dominate you. Uh, that's the ones that you just... To leave. <laughs> yes, right. And, Not and, the planet, but it's right, beautiful. It has right. butterflies and hummingbirds. Well, it also has ticks. Oh, yeah. Let's we'll get rid of ticks. Yeah. Let's get see, rid of ticks. and thorns in roses. <laughs> thorns. I think, see, that Actually, one? I have a story about thorns oh, and roses. Oh, you do? Yes. Okay. Uh, okay, this will be interesting because I had in my yard in Sacramento um, too many roses in one area. Right? Okay. Too many. I, I and, and they asked me to thin them out. Right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Because there were too many of them. Yeah. The elementals of the roses, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I went in there, and this lad came over, and he took some of the roses, and he made sure that all the others were fine. And they grew really fast, really big, and it was some beautiful roses on them. Mm. And one day, I, I felt the pull of, they wanted me to take some of the roses so that I could take them inside the house so they could be that energy be inside the house. Oh, nice. So I went there, and I started walking all through the... Roses and they were like touching each other, and I was stuck in here and moving over there to get ah, this one, wow. and then over here and there. And in not one moment did I think that I would be um, scratched or or anything. Wow. And I wasn't. Wow, right? you're right, right. I wasn't right. They they guided me, you. Yeah, they asked me to go there. and They were showing me this rose, that rose, or whatever. It was like a present because they were feeling so oh. grateful for the work that I had done to make them healthier and oh, more space. Wow. And their sister and brothers went off to live in a park, an edible oh. forest that this guy was building, right? So nice. It was really nice. And um, and that was my experience with roses, and I didn't know that they stand, right? Because mm -hmm. that had been my experience with roses from before, too. Mm -hmm. That they don't sting if, because you're helping them. Mm -hmm. Why would they? Mm -hmm. Right, right. It, was, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. And then at one point, this other person went into to get a I can't remember what was happening, a toy or something landed, they went into the rose area and they got completely stuck, <laughs> right? Their clothes and everything and they oh, couldn't go back or forward. I had to go in and take the branches off them and Whoa. stuff. And I thought, why did that happen? And then I said, because that's what roses do. And I thought, no, they don't. Right. How so funny. Like, yeah, there's sticks and rose bushes that will stick with you, but not necessarily. Right. You know? Right. Right. Take because um, can you call somebody else? They will. <laughs> right. And right. the rose bushes won't necessarily sting you. So right. it's, it's, it's beyond. I mean, it's it really magical. Is beyond magical. It yeah. is magical. Yes. 
Well, we've gone on for a little while, uh, at least a half an hour. Yeah. And That's good. Yeah. Good. Do you feel like? Yeah. Yeah, we did yeah. it. I think so. All yeah. right. Give Yay. me a. <laughs> That's it. Thank you. Thank That's you, everybody. Comes. Don't forget I'm special. <laughs> <laughs> She's going to oh, take. Oh, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to give you. What's that called? Oh. I'm going to activate your crown chakra. Oh, okay. All right. Oh, I feel it. Oh, there, my God. Your crown chakra is now active. Wow. Oh, thank you, Anelia. You're welcome. You are now my mistress. My yes. mistress. <laughs> <Buzz up. laughs> mistress. <laughs> Get the whips and the high heel boots on. <laughs> and we let's leave it with a good laugh. Yes. Yeah. Well, thank you, Anelia. And your event is in Europe. Uh, just tell us again when you're oh, going to yeah. be uh, in Spain. July the 23rd, oh. 2016, Spain, Girona. You wow. can go to ascension101.com to get your tickets. Oh, God, I would. Lo I love the Spain. I love Spain. And, and I've never been there, but I love the Spanish people. I mean, I love I love all people. I love the Chinese <laughs> people. I love the Filipino. So, but the Spanish is like, wow. You know, oh, God, I would give anything. Uh, but, you know, being in a plane, okay, uh, yeah, all yeah. right, never mind. <laughs> For seven I'll, hours. <laughs> I'll support you in, in being there in uh, presence. Okay. <laughs> so, but that's on, like, repeat it again, it's on April? Uh, July the July? 23rd, 23rd. If you're in Spain, but we also, the same price of the ticket, you can get it online, so. Now, will people be able to attend it uh, online yeah, as well? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's going to be just broadcast, it's not going to be, like, interactive online. Okay, will you? Just they... It's just four hours. Okay. Right? The four hours. And so will they see you yes. on the on the video? Yes. It will be like a live. It'll be it's like a broadcast. YouTube video, but you'll be live. Right. Oh, I gotta do that. Yes. I'm gonna buy my ticket. Okay. And be there to watch you live from my last event. Yeah, <laughs> and then the, and we'll get to see the Spanish people. Right. And will it be in? Will people be speaking in Spanish? So what we've decided to do was to do it in English and then having a headsets in Spain. Okay. You can get headset in Spanish and oh, French. Good. Okay. Um, and then the online stuff, it's going to be in English only. But okay. the recording, we're going to put the, the translation thing and put it on top of the video for the Spanish-speaking people and also the French-speaking people. Oh, the French nice. People. Oh, the French. So I love get, the French. They will get oh. that like, after a few weeks. Oh, mon Dieu. <laughs> Je t'aime. <laughs> Je t'aime. I'm going to take it and support you. Because, you know, I mean, this is 2016 and we've only got till 2020. Well, thank you, Anelia. It has been a pleasure. Yeah, thank you, Lassie. And, uh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Camera's off.